Welcome oh, to a yeah. special episode of Storyboard. Uh, this is all about JWT Global and JWT India. We're going to be talking to Matt Eastwood, Global CCO of JWT Worldwide, and Sanfil Kumar, CCO of uh, JWT for India and South Asia. Uh, welcome back to India. Thank you. So tell me, since last we met, what are the new challenges for a global CCO? Uh, look, I think it's still about uh, creative consistency and, and building that up across the network. And that's that's the thing I still drive for is is making sure that uh, we're doing you know our best creative creative work across all of our offices. But I think uh, you know the the role of a CCO is definitely evolving as well, and and you know it. It becomes uh, as much about connecting our agencies with culture and building those relationships, um, particularly around things like tech. You know, it actually becomes about me brokering relationships with partners that we can work with, um, and helping deliver those uh, relationships locally. So, were you at CES? I wasn't at CES. Uh, I was planning on going to CES, and then my sister said to me, "I'm coming to visit you in New York." And I'm like, so I, unfortunately, I couldn't go. But I, I spent a lot of time reviewing what was happening. Uh, look, I, I think you know it was really interesting. Uh, it's funny. I did an interview sort of towards the middle of last year where somebody said, "What do you think of the two trends coming out uh, that'll be significant in the industry?" And, I, and for me, it was virtual reality and uh, artificial intelligence. And I think CES definitely reflected that, you know, AI is taking huge leaps and bounds forward. I mean, it was CES this year, as you know, was it was the year of Amazon Echo and everything was integrated with Echo. And I think um, it, it we're just beginning to see that. So I think, you know, that that's new ground for us um, and, and something that we have to find ways to incorporate in quite quickly and, and do it ahead of our clients and bring, you know, we we try to work with CES and go, all right, well, these are the trends, but what does that mean for you as our client? Um, so, we, you know, we're talking a lot about AI and VR, I think is, is I think it has gone mainstream. Like, I, you know, for me, when the New York Times put 1.2 million Google Glass, Google um, Cardboard on the front of the newspaper, you know, that's pretty mainstream to me, but I, I think it still hasn't quite uh, shaken loose and got into, you know, more and more clients sort of vocabulary of like when sure. we're thinking of work. Staying with this now, who is your competition, Matt? You know, uh, five years ago, you would, you could name them. Now you yeah. don't even know where they exist. And I mean, I th yeah. the, the, so who, is, the, who is your competition? The challenge now is that our competition is so much broader than it ever was. It, you, you know, it used to be you were competing against other advertising agencies. Right. Now I think you, it's so much broader. You're competing against uh, media partners. So you know, any of the media companies. You're competing. You're competing against uh, any of the technology companies. You know, Facebook, Google, um, Instagram. Absolutely. They're all building internal um, uh, uh, agencies. And I also think. I mean, it's weird. I, I, I did a presentation about a week ago where I said that our biggest competition is almost our clients. Right. You know, clients themselves are building internal agencies like never before, not to handle everything, but to handle big aspects of it, particularly around content. So, you know, we have to be competitive in that nature. Um, and then there's a whole swathe of, uh, of new players coming in. Well, not new, they've been around, but you know, your Accentures and Deloitte's and right. you know, Absolutely. they're all rampantly buying up agency services around the world. So, um, you know, I, I, I think it, it's a more competitive marketplace, but I think that's when brands really stand up and, uh, and, and it's important. You know, we're very lucky in that we have a brand like J. Walter Thompson behind us that's been around for 150 years. So we're not a new kid on the block. You know, we know our way around. We just have to keep evolving and adapting. But um, yeah, it's definitely, you, you have to look much broader than what, what the agency next door is doing, that's sure. for sure. You know, Matt, you know, uh, uh, sort of, you know, you've spoken about the, you know, about uh, talent being a commodity and the importance of passion. So, uh, is that going to be a differentiator in the way, for example, JWT deals with things and, yeah. and perhaps one of these competitors? Yeah, definitely. I mean, look, I, for me, I think what I've realized, particularly as I travel the world and, um, you know, meet different people, I think to sort of claim that any one company has a monopoly on great talent is yeah. just ridiculous but I think uh, what we can have is, is we can have a passion beyond reason be, beyond the other companies how will the clients see that um, look I think uh, it's interesting I've got a creative director who works for me in New York and um, the, the the thing about 
the, he is so incredibly passionate. He's incredibly talented as well, but he's so passionate. And that's the thing that co clients comment to me most about is that, you know, he's always coming to them with new ideas. He's always interpreting uh, what happens at a festival on their behalf, etc. So I think beyond the talent, it, it's, it really is the passion, I think, that differentiates. Um, and that's the big thing that I've tried to instill into the network is that, you know, we have incredibly talented people, but, you know, we need to be passionate where others fall down, where others give up, where others walk away. And, um, and, and I think that's how we're going to make a big difference. And, and we've been doing that. So. You know, getting to a, a difficult part for all global CCOs, which is uh, the hunt for the gold. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you, know, we, you know, that time I was talking to you earlier saying maybe it's a good idea for agencies to take a two-year holiday away from awards. How do you react to that? Yeah, I mean, I look, I think it'd be fabulous to have a holiday, but uh, uh, at the same time, I mean, what I think it does is, is for me, I use it as a way to constantly push the network forward and, and it's I think it's nice to have these sort of particularly you know can is the big one internationally but to have that sort of annual moment where you know you really sort of have to rally together to you know have the new work that you want to enter into can um, you know I try not to be obsessed by awards but I, tr I definitely am aware that the impact that they can have uh, on the culture you know I, I think when last we spoke was uh, just over two years ago and you know we that I remember that year we did uh, we won 19 lions at Cannes which was to me unacceptable for a global network and then last year we won 80 lions at Cannes uh, which is the highest that we'd ever achieved and I think the awards are fantastic and I love doing that but actually the impact that that had on the network was just phenomenal you know the the I said to everyone when I first started I want us to be recognized for our creativity but what I really want is all of our people just to walk a couple of inches taller in their shoes and feel proud and f have some swagger of like we work for one of the most creative networks in the world you know another area I want to talk to you about and later we'll talk to Sensor about the same thing is you know you, you spoke about once where you were aghast that somebody thought a one million dollar for a film was a small budget. Yeah. You, you say, but in the, your competition, uh, as in the say digital company, the social company, and so on, are learning to make films at a fraction of that cost. Yeah. So how is that going to play out globally? We're going through, undergoing a huge shift, I think, for the industry. Uh, you know, I think for a long time we were in an industry that was happy to uh, pass on production and making to other companies you know it was very very common for agencies to go well here's our script here's our budget you go away and make it production yeah. company and I, and, and I think that, that that won't necessarily go away but I think the um, the reality is that we have to become better at making uh, uh, yeah. as agencies and we have to bring that back in we have to enable our people um, to make their ideas come to reality and, and and particularly I think in the tech space you know I think if you can't sit there with a creative technologist and go all right can I make if I do if someone does a tweet can I make that physical thing react to that you know you, you never you can't know that stuff so you have to you, you have to make it and you have to experiment and you have to realize well that's not going to work maybe we have to change so I think you know I think for us uh, that is becoming a, a really important part of who we are, um, bringing a lot of that back in, and I and I also think uh, content as such has a lot of has really changed the sort of the scope of making. You know, I think we'll we'll we will still make you know our expensive TV commercials, and and you know the Super Bowl is coming up in a week in the Absolutely. United States, and you know there's there's always going to be a need for those big expensive Super Bowl ads, and I can't see the Super Bowl going anywhere. But, you know, now it's about constantly feeding that engine of, of content that clients need to have the ongoing relationship. And, and we need to be able to do that without uh, the, the budgets that, uh, you know, we used to have. So I think uh, it's, it's a big change. But, but again, I think it's an exciting change because I love the idea of creatives having, getting their hands dirty and actually kind of making stuff and, and keeping busy with that. And that's what keeps everyone excited. Uh, we take a short break here. When we come back, uh, we'll have Matt joined by Sensel. We'll get an Indian perspective as the Indian CCO of JW India gives his perspective on all that we've been talking about. Welcome back. We continue with the JW special. And uh, now we've got uh, Sensel Kumar who joins Matt Eastwood. And uh, we're going to discuss uh, advertising in India more than advertising in the world. Hello, Sensel. Hi, Anand. So now you've heard stuff that we're talking about. So, 
I was telling Matt uh, before this interview that, you know, last year has been lots of advertising, lots of profits perhaps for lots of agencies, but very few quality briefs, which leads to, you know, what happens to the pressure for awards and on people like you. How important is it to win awards and how is the pressure this year? I think it's very important to, to win awards because right. it's, a, it's finally, that's the, that sort of sets the benchmark every year. You know, every year you've got to have a creative team which is motivated and uh, focused on, you know, getting something out because they put in all that hard work. At the end of the year, they've got to, you know, earn some reward out of it and earn some recognition. So, right. and, and creativity thrives on recognition, I think. Otherwise, you know, if, if there are no awards, then the creative people would not know where to aim okay. or what to, what, what to benchmark their uh, work. But, what did we do last year? What did we do this year? What right. won at can this year? What, what is going to win this year? Right. You know, you've got to have some kind of a momentum for you to sort of, uh, but first the work comes and to your, to your other point about the briefs, I think every brief is an opportunity. It's up to us to actually try and convert that opportunity into 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 gold or into, into, into a short list at least <laughs> 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 okay uh, just take me to you know we were talking about how the need for creative directors and, and for agencies to go back to making yeah. as opposed to outsourcing the making you know and uh, I think India we the cycle of you know taking the making out of the agency almost by design you know saying no more films division and no more you know uh, people in charge of films so how do you react to that uh, that the making has to be done by by the creators themselves. The man always says that passion trumps talent. I think right. that's the most important thing. And right. if you are passionate about your idea or your team's idea, and then it's up to you to actually bring it to life. You know, either you give it out to a person who you, who you think is better than you, right. or if the budgets are low, I've done it in the past several times, and that's what I encourage the people in my team as well to do, to go out there and make it yourself. Because, uh, you know, so most of it, it's not just the film, right? Some, uh, today sure. we're talking about uh, involving uh, uh, coders, involving, Absolutely. you know, uh, graphic designers from outside, whatever, and uh, graphic novelists, and then putting together something which, which is uh, just quite dramatic, which hasn't, hasn't been done before. So I think um, creativity, uh, has to have that little bit of making in it for it to, to, to sort of complete the loop. Matt, Matt uh, this, does this require a different kind of skill set required? More left brain, right brain combination rather than, you know, I the mean, whole... I mean, definitely you know, much broader than uh, I think than certainly when I was trained uh, to work in advertising. You know, I think, uh, you know, I find myself, I'm working on a project at the moment where I'm uh, helping create a scripted television series on behalf of a client. Now. <laughs> You know, I studied graphic design at university. I certainly never imagined that I would be writing a TV series, but I think that's the world we're living in now. You have to be able to embrace all those different skills. And, and, and I think what I love, and, and I think what is unique about Indian culture, and I, and I do think there's a similarity to Australian culture for me, is that there is a sort of a scrappiness to it that I think you just have to get on and do it. And as Sentil said, just find a way. If you're passionate about your work, find a way to bring it to life. Because, you know, I, I think I grew up in a market where there was never enough money. Um, and you could either sit back and just complain and go, well, we're not gonna make anything. Or you could just find a way to make it. And if that meant you had to pick up a camera yourself and film it, then you would. Um, so I, I kind of, I actually love that making part of it. And I think, uh, you know, having, worked in the creative industry my whole life for me the thing that gets creative people out of bed every day is making stuff you know there's an inherent danger uh, of uh, you know embracing people or hiring people who are more skilled in the making yeah. than in the yeah. in the brand area or the idea you know, central how do you react to that i think it's a combination of both uh, like we like we spoke earlier it, it is about creative people wanting to make the things right, right. so and then you collaborate so, when you, when you look at a resume or, or you're having a coffee with somebody you want to hire, yeah. the f you first establish that he or she is a creative person and then you worry about the next. Is, is that how you, what you're saying? Absolutely. The first, the most important thing is the person has to be creative, right? right. And then you can, you, you don't need to hire all the coders in the world. Right. You, you can collaborate with the coders on a particular project. So you hire people from outside, right. put together a team does, which does works this, on a particular does this project. need younger people to be on, on creative teams as opposed to, you know, uh, the average that we see in India today. Absolutely, I mean, I mean, the the, the talent that's coming in uh, today is is, is 
is much younger than uh, what what you would want to hire because those are the guys who are actually shining out there and there and it's uh, like Matt pointed out you've got uh, people in Facebook and people in Google and people uh, who moved out of advertising agents and gone there and I think it's about time they come back so yeah. there is a certain churn and and we get the benefits of their exposure to that that kind of a uh, a work culture and how, how we can bring them all together. Sorry, Matt, you wanted to say something? Yeah, there? no, I think, I think there is uh, an entrepreneurial spirit in young people and particularly in young creatives these days that, um, you know, they, they, uh, they've, they're very much coming out of school and university thinking that they're going to be famous for something that they've created. And so they, they're, they're the kind of people who, uh, you know, one day they'll have an idea for an app and they'll come to you three days later and say, so I built a mock-up of the app. And th so there's, there's no barrier to them of actually creating. It's just yeah. how they've presumed. Uh, I mean, I, I hire young creatives uh, all the time and I'm amazed when, uh, you know, they, they come to you and present an idea, but they don't just present it as a script or something. They've made a little video to sell the idea, which they've cut themselves on, on uh, you know, iMovie or something like that. So I, I think they're just much more comfortable with the tools. Um, and it's not to say, I don't think it's an age thing, you know, I mean, obviously uh, everyone can learn those skills, but I think they went through a time where it was just part of who they are and, and how they behaved and, and they're used to sort of uh, kind of proof of idea yeah. of if I'm going to have an idea I need to prove it to someone else that it's going to work or it's going to be interesting so they just do it which which I love so the more people like that we can get in the industry uh, and, and you know we're, we're doing some big things globally to try and attract those people because you know I think they are sort of moving off to become entrepreneurs and things like that and we need to make sure they understand that actually uh, this industry is a place where you can be entrepreneurial you know I mean I, I look at what uh, these guys did last year with the blood banking right, app. absolutely you know I, I, I think that's revolutionary and, and and that is a business idea wonderfully supported by creativity and I think if you attract the kind of people that won't think like that they'll realize that advertising as it is today is a place where they can just uh, have ideas and bring them to life in whatever way they need to so Okay, Central, now getting back to India and you know, feet on ground. Matt's going to be with you for the next couple of days here and in Delhi. So what are you going to show him in the next two days? Uh, Matt's here to review all the work and right. hopefully you know, pick a few horses that uh, we would ride mm -hmm. all the way to, to Cannes. Right. And uh, of course, see the work that uh, is not just about the awards, finally, right, as sure, you pointed sure. out. I mean, it, 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 it is about looking at, at the kind of work that's coming out from different, eight, different regions in the office. So we're going to review the work across all eight offices that sort of I look after now. So we're starting with uh, tomorrow we're doing uh, Bombay and, uh, and the south which is Bangalore, Chennai and Hyderabad and even Colombo actually. And then we move to Delhi and uh, Matt will be reviewing uh, all the ECDs in Delhi, the work that they've done over the last uh, one year uh, and also uh, from Calcutta and, mm. uh, and probably Nepal as well. So, right. so. so Matt, what, what is your expectation of this trip? I mean it's a long trip. And uh, look, I, I, I think um, you know Santil has kind of led a culture here that is really embracing tech in an interesting way and you know I, I look at the work we're doing uh, you know for the Hindu newspaper we're, with the mobile app that is different when you look at it different ways you know I mean it's tech enabled thinking and, and I think uh, Santil has sort of really made big strides to build relationships with coders and people like that so I, I've, I'm I'm thinking it's funny a lot of there was there was so the, the buzzword for so long was digital oh agencies need to be more digital and I think that has almost been surpassed by by tech I look at all the work that we did uh, that won at can last year and, and the common theme through it all is tech from the next Rembrandt which is a beautiful artistic uh, experiment but it was tech enabled by all data etc so I think you know I'm really interested because this is India is one of the tech capitals of the world so I'm I'm quite I'm always interested to see how that has influenced the work and what we're going to see out of that um, and, I, and I also love that you know it's as much led by some of our smaller offices you know Bangalore is not our biggest office but is uh, is but it's where central sits so exactly so uh, you know they, they certainly punch above their weight right um, so you know I'm, a, I'm quite excited to spend some time and uh, and really seal the work and spend some time with the people yeah now as a global CCO what what is it that you bring to the table to central and uh, what does central bring to you well, we have a great relationship. You know, I think what I try to do is uh, be the the voice of uh, the international juries as well, and give a perspective from uh, from outside of India. Because I think, it, you know, unfortunately, 
the one thing you find when you get to Cannes is nobody cares where it was from. They just look at the idea and go, is it good or is it not? Um, and I think, uh, you know, the, the lucky position I'm in is that I see a lot of stuff from all around the world, so I try to bring that perspective. Um, but also, the, I think for me, the big thing I uh, spend a lot of time on is is talent. You know, I, I, I think having that network of, of talent and how I can bring that to bear in the Indian market, uh, and even uh, you know, moving people from here to other markets, etc. Um, you know, we try to run a very um, sort of open agency program where uh, you know, at any one time. Uh, our guys in India will be working on a brief for, uh, you know, Rolex in Geneva or something, and and we try and uh, keep that spirit alive. So, you know, I, I, I'm I'm a big fan of what Sintel's doing, and I think he's just about to hit one year as CCO, I think, and um, you know, I think more he, than one year, more than one year, yeah, December fifteenth, yeah. just cross the year. Yeah. I keep track. Yeah. <laughs> But I, you know, I think, you know, what I loved and the, and what we first talked about is for me, I think Centil is is the sort of the new age creative director. I think it, very different approach to what had come before him, and I think, um, you know, he's still on the tools, still doing things, which I think is is unique. Um, but also, I think he brings that sort of comfort with tech and um, to the work that we do. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm a big supporter. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Central. Thank you, Matt, for a wonderful conversation. And uh, let's hope our viewers learn something from this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.